Okay. We will resume our meeting. We just spent an hour in executive session uh, to discuss uh, collective bargaining. That's it. So we will now go into open session. Uh, first order of business is public input. So if anybody has anything they'd like to ask or say before we get into the agenda, please make it known. Seeing no one at this time, we'll go to our student report. And sadly, we get our final report tonight from Jerlyn Kaitamadam. Jerlyn is graduating pretty soon. Yep, one month. <laughs> one month. She'll be out of here. So I Jerlyn? can vouch that Jerlyn is graduating. <laughs> yes. I can confirm. <laughs> and before, Ashley, and Jerlyn was a member of the, is a member of the North Riding Girls Track Team, which won the state Division Three relays on Sunday. We hosted the state meet here, and the girls, it's a big accomplishment because we've moved up from Division Four to Division Three. And Jerlyn was just telling me it's the first time that we've competed against bigger schools like Tewksbury, Plymouth South High School, a lot of big schools, and uh, we still won. So it's a great accomplishment. Jerlyn? Thank you. Um, so some notable academic matters. We had numerous AP classes uh, have their practice exams this past weekend, and so that way a lot of students were able to get a gauge of what the exams will feel like as opposed to taking tests in school. Um, and then they were able to kind of score them and understand what they would be on on a one to five scale. Um, last week we had pre-registration for the AP exam, so that'll help us um, save a lot of time when we actually take the exams. And the exams themselves begin next week on May 7th. Um, there's an SAT date um, this Saturday, May 5th, and MCAS diagnostic testing begins tomorrow, and this year NRHS is introducing the electronic testing as a pilot. Some notable fine arts matters. Maskers, Chorus, Band, and Notorious went to New York over this past weekend. Um, they got to see Mean Girls, The Play That Goes Wrong, and SpongeBob the Musical. Um, they all had a lot of fun. Uh, Notorious is hosting the Sing Fling on May 11th at 7 p.m., which is an a cappella showcase. Uh, so a lot of teams from other towns will come over um, and perform. Some notable academic matters, as we were talking, uh, sorry, athletic matters, as we were talking about the girls track and field team uh, won the Division Three state relays, which was hosted on our turf yesterday. Um, and the new laboratories and concessions were a big hit. Everyone was amazed by our facility. So thank you to everyone. Thank you, Mr. Webster, for um, your leadership and bringing that project about. Uh, softball is currently undefeated. Baseball is four and two. Uh, girls tennis is looking great with only one loss. And overall sports at NRHS are doing very well this season. Uh, tomorrow is the deadline for college decisions. <laughs> um, there yes. be. And someone yes. hasn't made theirs yet, have they? <laughs> Hours, a little bit over 24 hours. Um, there will be an American Red Cross blood drive on May 18th. Applications for class essayist were due last week, so any senior who wanted to have an opportunity to speak at graduation were able to submit uh, an essay, and so that'll be um, read by, I think, a panel of random, um, I think they're picking just teachers from the school that will kind of judge them. Um, community service hours are due <clears throat> next week for all the whole high school, or juniors and seniors. Um, Mary Madden won NEMAS president, and so she's following in her brother Dan's footsteps oh, cool. and taking big steps in the student council. So um, we were able to go to, we had it at Kowloon, it was the spring conference, and we campaigned for her, um, and so, uh, and then we all voted, and she won, so that was awesome. Um, the Elks Teenager of the Month banquet will be taking place on May 3rd. Uh, the North Shore Chamber of Commerce Honors Scholars Dinner is May 8th at the Doubletree Hotel in Danvers. Uh, NHS induction is on May 10th. Um, and this past Friday, Kids Night Out was held by the Student Council, um, and it was a big success. We had tons of kids there, so uh, everyone enjoyed that. And the China trip, uh, the kids who went on, China, on the China trip returned after vacation, and um, everyone had a wonderful time. So my student report that I brought with me was an essay from my AP literature class. So along with books that we're reading in our class, we, um, for the past few weeks, have been reading a lot of poetry. And so this assignment specifically, we had to choose two poets and um, I chose, or one poet, and I chose Emily Dickinson, and you had to choose two of um, their poets and uh, poems and kind of compare them, contrast them, talk about why you chose them, why you liked them, and that sort of thing. Um, so the poems that I chose kind of had underlying tones of, I know it sounds, depressing but depression and anxiety and the reason I chose them um, is because uh, most of her works have been about um, a cry for help almost kind of talking about how um, she was going through a lot um, within herself and there weren't a lot of scars to show for her pain but asking people who read her poetry to believe that she was still in pain um, so the reason that I chose the poems is because in light of recent events especially with um, women coming forward with abuse that they've experienced both like physically and mentally there's 
a lot of times where there aren't any physical scars to show for their pain, but there is a lot of pain that people are going through. And even high schoolers in general, there's a lot of anxiety that goes around. And um, I feel like a lot of times people may not believe the pain that people are going through, but there really is that pain in, in, uh, within. So I thought a lot of people could relate to it. Um, so yeah, so I did that. And it's on the AP rubric scale. It's out of um, nine points. So. And then also talking about that, on tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, um, May 3rd, they're having a showing of the movie Angst um, in the DLL for the parents, and then May 4th for students. Um, that's also talking about anxiety within high school students and kind of um, just pe making people more aware about it all. So it's interesting you picked Emily Dickinson, mm -hmm. given where she's from, yeah. isn't it? Amherst, yes. Massachusetts. <laughs> have, you, have you narrowed down your choices for college? I have. Um, UMass Amherst and American University. UMass Amherst and American. So American's your safety school. <laughs> <laughs> if, if for some reason you can't go to your mouth. <laughs> so is this is this the end now of the Kaidamatum era in yes. terms of student representatives? We'll see. We had her, uh, Jerlyn's brother Jensen was I think for two years was also a student representative, and and Jerlyn's been doing it for two years now or three. Um, what sophomore year? Yeah, three. Years. Three years. And he's, <laughs> at, he's at the Honors College yeah. at UMass yes. Amherst. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Um, thank you so much. You've thank been you. great, and uh, we'll miss you. And good luck on your school decision. So thank thanks you very much. Thank you all again for everything. I've learned so much while I've been thank here. Thank you. You've done a great, great job. job. Great kid. Yeah. And all those academic um, achievements are great, but we want a state championship <laughs> and track. We and, will. And, and we're hosting it here. Thank goodness yeah. this guy's leaving after 19 <laughs> years. Honest. To, no, anyway, that was great. No, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next, we're going to we'll switch it up a little bit and we will go to the North Reading Middle School presentation and turn it over to Principal O'Connor. Michael, I'm gonna put your microphone up there. So yes. Um, thanks. When the students present, how will it be They should have to these if they want to go on the, these are the ones for the, for the TV. For the okay. TV, That's so. Okay. <laughs> So we have three different presentations tonight, three student presentations tonight. I'm really proud of all of the students who are here and their teachers to support them. But be before we do that, I just wanted to take a moment publicly to thank our Parents Association, our co-presidents, Heather Laverdier and Linda Novello. They're not actually here tonight, but they have been outstanding supporters of the middle school in to include enrichment programs we had last week. Kevin Lau, was he good? Yeah, Kevin Lau presented at the middle school and at the high school. Uh, it was an outstanding presentation brought to us by our parents' association. They've been very generous with breakfast and lunch, hospitality, uh, supply fairs for the teachers. And then typically every year they also give us a very generous end of year donation that we typically use for technology, which recently we've, uh, last year we helped Ms. Benarate with some video production equipment. So I just wanted to publicly thank our parents association. They are fantastic. And then we will begin our, our student presentations. We're going to switch up the order a little bit. The first student is Tyler Craig. So he's going to come up. They're all a little nervous, but it's OK. They're going to be awesome. I'm really, really proud to introduce you to Tyler Craig. I think he's, I think he's someone that you're going to hear a lot about. Tyler was selected by the middle school to be our Project 351 representative this year and he went to a conference in January and he's going to tell you about his day and how it impacted him a little bit and even what how it's continuing to impact him. Hi, my name is Tyler Craig and I'm an eighth grade student in North Reading Middle School. I was nominated by my teachers to represent North Reading as our town's ambassador at the Project 351 annual leadership conference held in January of 2018. Project 351 is a leadership and youth service organization that promotes community service and helping others. It is represented by all of the 351 towns and cities in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Each year, one eighth grade student is selected from each city or town to attend the leadership conference. I had a great experience when I attended the conference. I really enjoyed meeting new kids from other towns and started friendships that I hope will last a long time. The conference started out at the JFK Museum and Library, then we were divided into two groups there. My group went to the Martin Luther King School in Boston, and we painted in the hallways, the classrooms, and also painted a large mirror in the auditorium. Show them the paint his group. Oh. He's got paint on his ah. jersey <laughs> and the mural. At the beginning of April, as my part of community service, I organized a clothing drive at the middle school to benefit Cradles to Crans. Cradles to Crans is a nonprofit organization that provides new and gently used clothing and shoes to children ages infant through teens. 
and thanks to the generosity of the North Reading community, I was able to collect over 20 large bags of clothing and shoes for children in need. On May 12th, I will attend the leadership reunion at Gillette Stadium, where we will participate in the third annual Peace and Unity Walk for Martin Richards, who has made an honorary ambassador since he would have been in eighth grade this year. I have really enjoyed representing North Reading and look forward to continuing my role as an, an ambassador throughout the remainder of the year. Thank you. So this this is a program that was I think it was, it started under um, Governor Patrick, it did. and so was this like the fourth or fifth year we've participated? Well, was it longer than that? Than that? Yeah, yeah, more than that. It's probably its eighth year. So I think it started be right before I became principal. And so Tyler, we it's I mean you should be proud because it's a big honor. You think there's only 351 students out of how many middle school students there must be in this state? So uh, congratulations. And I've been reading a lot about not only. Um, what you did, but what the other groups did there, and uh, it's it's just a, it's a great to have student representatives getting out there into the community and helping out. Anybody else have any questions or, or comments on the on the committee? Thank you. Congratulations, great. Tyler. Thanks, Thanks Tyler. Thank nice you for representing us. I think it's just important to note that. Parents have asked me often about opportunities like this for middle school students because oftentimes leadership programs and even volunteer programs tend to start as, as students get a little bit older. So it's great to have something for an aspiring young leader to begin to you know really kind of hone his leadership skills and be able to give back to the community. So it's a wonderful program and I hope that they continue it for years to come. Next on the agenda is going to be two of our geography B, geography B winners from this year. Every year, Mrs. Jones runs an amazing geography B. It's it's kind of like a throwback. It's you know it, there is a little bit of technology, but it's a, just an old-fashioned geography B. And to be honest, I'm a little biased because I was a geography and social studies teacher for 10 years. So I think it's great that we still do this. But Carolyn Burton and Christian DeCost. Christian for the second year, right? Uh, our, our winners, Christian was first and Carolyn was a runner up. And so they're gonna talk to you a little bit about that experience and then they might even ask you a few questions, a few oh, geography no, questions. No, no. Terrible. So I'm gonna yeah, call them up. Away your to our and and Caroline is in the sixth grade. Wow. And Christian is in the seventh grade. Wow. So that's pretty cool. Well, we're not smarter than the sixth I grade. No. <laughs> I know that. years wow. at the middle school. So this is the 24th annual Geography B. And what happens is at when the kids come back from winter vacation, they take a written multiple choice 85 question random geography quiz. And the winner, the winner of each classroom competes in a grade B. So you have, you know, nine sixth graders and then nine seventh graders and nine eighth graders that will compete at, at the grade level and then the top three sixth seventh and eighth graders from their bees compete for the big school bee and these bees are held in the performing arts center it's a big deal in front of their peers and the school and the questions are political geography physical cultural economic and uh, many of the adults, as you will soon see, are humbled by the, 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 the questions that these kids are asked and that they, they answer successfully. So Caroline won for the, was one of the three representatives for the sixth grade, and Christian was one of the three seventh grade representatives, and they went, uh, they narrowed the field down from nine to two, and there was a championship round where these two went at it, and. Uh, Christian came out as the school champion and Caroline is the runner up, but it was tremendous. And so they wanted to share uh, some of their questions with you Great. this evening. So I'm gonna- Boston. Yeah, that, that could be. It could be. Before, they do, before they do that, before they do that, I would like to establish how much, how much studying and practicing did you do? Oh, I can already say he's gonna say none. Well. Well, a little bit. Oh, oh, great. No, you're supposed to say hours and hours no. and hours. Oh, boy. Oh, jeez. This is bad. Right. No, no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. I like it's not like no right. <laughs> Where's the, how does this work? Yeah. This is, well, we'll have yeah. There's no switch on the board. Well, right. High tech was going to come totally right. Totally cheating if you get an answer. Uh, um, thanks. 
the video production club. So the students, uh, just to some of the questions have choices. So we have a couple for you that have choices. Oh, choices, sorry. So we're going to kind of... Not more than two choices, is it? No, just two. We're going to ease you in with some that have choices. We can't even get the panel. And then they did pick some trickier ones. Poor Michael, he's a math guy. Yeah, right. What is this? This, this is not mine at all. That's a and I taught English. I'm just yeah, putting that out there. I was an English major, sorry. I couldn't even. All right. So, um, and this, so there's your microphone. So there you go. So this, yeah, this is for the audience at home. Yeah, make sure you say it loud enough. So Yes. So they'll know how stupid we are. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're going to butter you up with uh, an easy one that I got here. Uh, so we're going to start it off. Number two. Well, um, this for you, you, you know yeah. what I'm saying. All right, what is the term for a wetland created where a river meets a larger body of water and deposits sediment? Moraine or delta? Say that again. Yep. <laughs> in, in the B, you would say, "Oh, can you repeat the question?" Oh, could you repeat the question, please, <laughs> sir? <laughs> what is the term for a wetland created where a river meets a larger body of water and deposits sediment? Moraine or delta? Oh, don't give choices. Okay. And how did your answers from here? Yeah, I have no idea. I think so. So then, you go, right? So, you, you the judge, how'd they do? I like none of them asked. None of them said, What is? It's not Jeopardy. Huh? What is Yep, everyone got it. Everyone got it. Good. All right. Question number two Jerry What is the term for rain producing winds that blow over the Arabian Sea? toward India for six months of the year? Monsoon or cold front? From India to... Um, what is the term for rain-producing winds that blow over from the Arabian Sea towards India for six months of the year? Monsoon or cold front? <laughs> what did he put? Everyone is correct, Monsoon. The reason I know it is because Gorilla Monsoon was a wrestler in the uh, Worldwide Wrestling Federation, so that's the only reason Different I know spelling. That. Yeah, different spelling, but. Okay, question number three. What is the term for an area where two of Earth's tectonic plates converge and one sinks under the other? Subduction zone or divergent boundary? Oh, oh boy. Well, since we can't spell either one of them. <laughs> I'm an A or B. Okay. What is the term for the area where two of Earth's tectonic plates converge and one sinks under the other? Subduction zone or divergent boundary? Come on, Jerry. Oh, you got it? Everybody, everybody ready? I don't know. Yes. I don't know. I guessed. <laughs> The correct answer was subduction zone. Yes. <laughs> Jerry, we're both at 100. You get, did yes. you get to that right? No. Oh, I mean, I took all right. geography. You're out. She's out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, we're taking off the training wheels now. No choice. Oh, 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 wow. I, don't, I knew I didn't oh, like this guy. I knew it. <laughs> you were very nice. You did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, all right, question four. The Kara Sea is a large arm of what ocean? So you got a one for a chance. The Kara Sea is a large arm of what ocean? Can you spell, you spell Kara? that? Uh, K A R A. Kara. What ocean? So you got a one for a chance, so, you know. Oh, there's four oceans? I know. I don't know. I have no idea. This probably isn't even an ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I got Martin's Pond, is that it? No. <laughs> Hate to say it, but you're all wrong. It, oh. That would be the Arctic Ocean. Oh. You gave it your best, though. What'd you have, Jerry? The Indian, I had the Indian, Indian Ocean. Indian, Indian, Indian. So something about the Indian Ocean, I don't know. I didn't even know there was an Arctic Ocean. I thought it was the Arctic Sea. So we got a question five here. Once again, no choices. Oh. My apologies. Uh, He's enjoying this. Yeah. <laughs> What is the name of the landlocked sea between Uzbekistan and, uh, Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan that has nearly disappeared because of upstream irrigation? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll go with you. Yeah, that's what I guess. What? what is the name of the landlocked sea between uh, Uzbekistan that. and Kazakhstan that has oh, nearly yeah, disappeared because yeah. of upstream irrigation? Oh, you're right. Yeah. That's what I wrote. Yeah, 
That's it. That's it. <laughs> Are you kidding me, Stan? That's the answer that I came up with. All right, so once again, I'm sorry. None of you are right. <laughs> Oh, wow. Uh, Caspian Sea is close. Close oh. by. It's the Aral Sea would be the correct answer. What? Never. 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 You're making that up. <laughs> <laughs> you want to read it? You're making that up. Yeah, I you want to read it? Okay, here comes a nice person now. No, not anymore, though, right? Well, I don't think this question is that nice. <laughs> don't say you don't think it's that difficult. Answerable? Nice. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. This one's really tricky. Oh. What capital city about 500 miles from southwest of southwest of Ma Moscow is located on the banks of the Dnieper River? It's 500 miles southwest of Moscow. <laughs> What's the word? What's Dnieper? I'm trying to visualize it. Wait a second. Um, what, is the, what, is the, what capital city about 500 miles southwest of Moscow <laughs> is located on the banks of the Nierper River? 500 south. Um. D N I E P E R. Does anybody know this? I don't know. Yeah, I'm totally like mine. <laughs> the correct could you please tell us <laughs> the correct answer was Kiev Kiev oh because people think Moscow is the cap oh very good you didn't even look Terry you didn't look at mine is that it I'm sorry is that it Yep. That's it. Uh, okay, so so I have a question. Were these actual test questions that you answered correctly? Um, yes, these were actual test qu questions, but some of these did not appear. Oh, so they didn't oh, appear. Okay. Yeah. I, I was and they were tough. Okay. Obviously, oh, yeah. you guys have a curriculum where you study this at school, but. You must go above and beyond that. So what what do you do to enhance the general curriculum that you have on geography? I mean, in, in, do you do it strictly as a preparation for the spell, for the geography bee, or do you do it just because you have an interest in this area? I'd say a little bit. Yeah, same with me. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Because like in sixth grade, like you do a lot of geography in sixth grade, yeah. but then in seventh grade you go right into history, eighth grade, same thing. Right. So you have one year devoted to ge only geography, which is good, and you just go over all this basic stuff. But this is above and beyond. This is above and beyond. So that so your interest is above and beyond what the, the general curriculum is in the seventh grade. Yes. And how do you how do you access inform what do you do to access information or to educate yourself? Well, there's a website, uh, Lizard Point, and uh, it's got clickable online quizzes. So you just go on the website. It's got a map. It asks you a question like where is what. Where is the United States? I'm going to click on yeah. the United States or whatever. Mm. And because so eventually you just learn it by default. It's a, it's I mean, I, I like geography, but these questions are beyond, you know, obviously any general knowledge you're going to have about geography. So, but congratulations, both of you. Yes. And I would say that if you had let me use my phone in Google, I would have gotten <laughs> all <laughs> correct. But that's a great accomplishment, and uh, you both should be proud of what you've done. So, thank you very much. Just to add. Yeah, Chris Chen was one of the top 100 in the state. He's wow. on. Mrs. Jones uh, sponsored and took him out to Chicopee. Chicopee. Wow. Chicopee. To Chicopee wow. to participate in the state B, and he wow. was ranked in the top 100 students. That's great. Excellent. Good for you. Congratulations. Congratulations. I'll come take the low tech away. Everyone can use a good bit of humiliation in their day. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Cam. <laughs> What these kids know. Absolutely. You want to pass the erasers? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you need like the multiple choice ones, but. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You help Mr. Jones. I just want to be in the paper next to you one time. Huh? So she does want to be in the paper next to you. I, mean, you can't I know. Look at that. Thank you. I'll put my day job. <laughs> Great job. Christian and is also a history bee winner and wow. that's uh, something again that Mrs. Jones does and there's several students participate in a, a history bee and Christian made it to the 
finals, I guess, in Atlanta coming up. So oh, he's wow. he's a is superstar social Malden, studies student. At Malden Catholic recently? Wasn't the... His, his, yeah, yeah. The, Obviously, don't watch six hours of sports a day. So right. <laughs> okay. So the final part of our presentation tonight is Ms. Cinerate and some of her video production students, Danielle Sarno, Katie Mangraviti, Catherine Hoadley, and Ethan Sirocco, are going to show you some of the videos that they've made using our amazing technology. This amazing technology is not working. So we're going to go next door to Mr. Emerton's room. Okay. And it's all ready to go. And so we will have a brief recess, I guess, from the uh, television broadcast. It's there. a big enough room, so everybody's yeah, everybody welcome. <laughs> we're going to go right over right. here and take a left. I saw there was going to be geography being yeah. up like Jerry. For those, we had a, a technical glitch in here tonight. We saw a great presentation from the, uh, I think it's the video production club at the middle school. They meet an hour All every. Comments fell off again. Oh, I'm sorry. They meet an hour every other week, and they produce these great informative videos, and uh, they were outstanding. And I didn't get to thank them on the air for this, but I wanted to thank um, Ms. O'Connell and Mr. Maloney for another great job in getting the students prepared and the staff that was involved tonight. Um, so great job to everybody. We love seeing what the, our students are doing, and we love seeing how the teachers are kind of molding our younger students into uh, young adults and, and then adults when they get leave from high school. So thanks a lot. Great job. I think what I appreciate is, you know, I'm in the classroom just like you're in the classroom. And I like to see kids excited about things outside the classroom. And I think something like the video production, it just builds more community and just excitement about being here. You know, kids aren't running home right after school. They're excited, you know, to do something together. And I think that's that's impressive. So thank you very much. See you next year. No, we'll see you before then, but <laughs> next year officially. Thanks a lot. OK. Next, we will move on to, um, we do have a brief MSBA SSBC update, right? Wait, do you want to go to the? Mr. Maloney has a presentation on the great. Do you, do you mind taking him oh, out of the oh, OK. Oh, yeah. So no. we can do that? Yeah, yeah. OK. On the Washington trip. Thank you. Yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we haven't gone on the 2018 trip yet, and this was mm -hmm. it's kind of a big shift, I think, for everybody. Um, so when we moved over to World Strides uh, a year and a half ago, part of the conversation with World Strides was that they wanted to accelerate the timeline for registration for the next year's trip. And, you know, a, a shift for us um, in, in our timing. But you have a, um, a, a paper in yes. front of you that says the benefits of early registration. So what they're asking us to do is to get approval for the 2019 trip. And it really is a benefit for our families because there is a reduction in the, in the cost of the trip <clears throat> if parents register early. So two big things. It's a $70 uh, reduction in price. So it's, it's um, the trip ballpark next year, and it, it's getting up there, I'll admit that, is $999 uh, minus the 70 would, which would bring it down to 929 if parents register before, I believe it's June 15th. Additionally, the deposit is $49 instead of the $99. But another big feature is that the flag, the, the uh, financial assistance that World Strides offers, it's, it's a pool of money. In the later, parent, families try to access that money, the, the smaller that pool gets. So if they apply for the financial assistance earlier, there's a better chance they'll, they'll get more assistance for the trip. So it's, you know, the $70 reduction in cost and more access to the financial aid that World Strides <laughs> offers. So that's why they're asking us to, to push the date up uh, for registration. So we would have a meeting in the next couple of weeks, if with your approval, with our seventh grade parents for the 2019 trip. So it'll open up that financial assistance for the seventh grade. Uh, families and would be that that $70 discount 
in, in the price of the trip. So we're here asking uh, for your approval for the Washington, D.C. trip in 2019. Um, I believe the dates are June 10th to the 14th, um, 2019. Can I just add one thing? I'm sure you're well aware of this, but if you're not, maybe not by 2019, but soon thereafter, the history standards are changing, and civics and government <coughs> is going back to eighth grade, which is something we're really excited about. But this trip is such a really nice complement to that curriculum. So when that shift happens within the next, I would say, two years, it's going to, you know, assuming we still have your approval, it's just going to be like a capstone to everything that they have learned all year to then go see our government in action. It will be just even more amazing, I think, than it is more impactful than it is currently. Now, did you mean when you said government in action, is in action one word or two words there? I was just trying to, it could be both, right? Yes, it could be both. Either, okay. And I do have to say, going through this now my second time with World Strides and their level of, of customer service and uh, safety. The, their safety and their flexibility, it's, they're, they're wonderful to work with. That We have three people working on our account, Kate, who's our, our direct contact. We have a, a financial person and just another logistical person. She, she takes care of the rooms and the buses and all that. So it's, I know the cost is, is more than what it has been in the past, but you know, like with anything else, you do, you really get what you, what you pay for. And I know that y you seem, uh, both seem pleased with the change we made. Um, and last year's trip, I think, was excellent from everything I heard. I mean, not that the ones in the past weren't, but that the organization and some of the other things that World Strides did, I know that you were both happy with. So Very happy. fantastic. How many, how many nights? My son enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's five full days. So we leave on the Monday morning, then we, we come back on, on Friday. Any other questions? I think just one more detail is that the sooner people sign up, they have longer to right. for the payment plan. Right. I think that's key. You know, six months, you know, up to 12 months to pay, I think that would help a lot of families out. I agree. So if there's no further questions, I'll entertain a motion to approve the 2019 middle school eighth grade trip to Washington, D.C. on the 10th, we'll just call them tentative dates now, of June 10th to 14th. I think that, I think that 10th is a Monday. Yes. Okay. Graduation would be so the 7th. Yeah. Motion by Janine. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Julie. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you, you very much. Set. Thank you. Thanks again for your presentation. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Brown, we have a, just a quick note on MSBA SSBC. We're back in business tomorrow, correct? We are back in business tomorrow, sir. That's correct, with a 530 meeting in this room. Okay. And I assume it's just kind of an update and a catch up. We haven't met for several months, four months maybe, <coughs> three months? Yeah. We haven't met throughout the winter, so yeah. yeah. Okay. There are a few items to catch to catch the group up on. I think is is, is accurate. Um, before we actually, it's not part of the MS, uh, SSBC project, but I do want to note that the new concession stands and uh, restroom facility were used uh, yesterday at the state relay track meet. And from my understanding, it went off without a hitch. Um, I, I was over there Saturday when they were loading, when they were stocking the concession stand. It is just, it's so big in there. And we have so much, so much equipment in there. Marty uh, Tilton and his crew moved everything over there, refrigerators, freezers, shelving, tables. Uh, and of course the big hit though was running water, hot and cold. That's the, that's the big hit for the new concession stand. And so I wanna thank the, um, the committee, the Athletic Facilities Committee for, um, you know, going the distance on that one. It wasn't an easy project to get approved and thank the town for approving it. And uh, it's a little bit of a mess down there now. We've got grass we're trying to grow and we got stakes up and caution tape, but within a month or so that should all be all be down and things should look uh, good going forward. And Marty's a great contributor yes. um, to getting things done down there. Yep. It really is. So. Yeah, and, and Wayne uh, Hardacre and his crew also, they did a great job cleaning up after. Yes. When you have that many people down there, I went over today and I couldn't believe yeah. How how um, how clean it was, and also the uh, the new batting cages are are um, almost ready, uh, almost complete. I think the next day or two we'll see those ready to go. I think you'll see that portion of it completed tomorrow, yep. and I think just the final landscaping. And I think we're we're looking at Friday as being done. And and just to address, I've got a number of questions from different community members about when those restrooms will be open for the various youth programs, etc., that are using um, the field. 
and we have an athletic facility sub, uh, excuse me, an athletic subcommittee meeting tomorrow. So hopefully we can work out the details on that. And th I, I see no reason for them to not be open. I believe they're open as of yesterday. Right. Yeah. So um, if there's any, uh, we'll, we'll let people know on, on Facebook on the community connection. And we'll put I'll put out a notice if they're open or if not, what, what date they'll they'll be open. Sure. Are they locked when it's not in use? Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. We, I don't think there's been training done on it yet, but we there have hasn't a, on the, it's a remote. We have a remote locking system that can be, uh, you can control with an app. So, so some people. You could even schedule it theoretically to like. You can. Open right. So like, I assume like Dave Johnson, Marty Tilton, probably one or two others will have the app and will have the password and be able but to. But I think our objective was to have them available to any. Right. Uh, North event. Reading at high school event or any youth yeah. event that was down there. Any Not just the turf field. Yeah. Turf field. Baseball field, all-purpose field, and soft. So the whole complex. If anybody's using it, those bathrooms will uh, the plan is to have those yep. open. Okay. Next, we'll move on to the school committee self-evaluation, and I will turn it over to Ms. Kopke. So, in your packet, you should have the compiled self-evaluation results. I handed back your individual results just to kind of help with conversation if there's anything you'd like to share. Um, some <coughs> items that I did want to call your attention to was number five, adopted a mission statement. And that seems to kind of be popping up year to year, so maybe that's something the evaluation subcommittee can discuss because it's been done, it's been adopted, so to kind of continually have that on our evaluation form um, perhaps we can remove that or because I think it affects our score there might be some yep. understanding by different members about whether we should have that or not in addition I would like to share a couple of comments um, that I have individually and people can jump in as you wish um, particularly the educational program in number 25. The school committee collaborates with superintendent to assess programs and services as part of a strategic planning and budget process. I ranked that somewhat lower just because I feel that we have the, the strategic plan presented to us. We discuss it, we approve it, but as far as having any sort of um, influence or discussion prior to the completion of the plan. I don't feel that we as school committee members have a lot of say in that sort of thing. So I don't know if that's something other people feel or want to bring up in conversation, but that's kind of where I ranked it. Yeah, I just, I, I don't know, in terms of um, in terms of what our purview is, I, I, I could see having input. I've always viewed it as it's a plan that's put together by mm -hmm. the administrative team led by the superintendent, and then we, I think we're given a chance to provide input. Don't you present to us on a preliminary basis do, yeah, first? Yeah, the October update, you know. <clears throat> but I wouldn't have an objection if someone wanted to participate earlier, although I just think it's, from my point of view, as not being an educator, I mean, there's some things I could add, but probably a lot of things that you don't want me to add. That, so. I don't know if anybody else has a comment on, on that. Go ahead. I was just going to say, for me, every year, and if you look at the way I mark this, it's the area that we have the least, I think. Right. Impact. Uh, impact. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Um, but I think that's for a reason. I think we do rely on the administrators sure. and, the, and the team that we have to, to present us with the, uh, with the educational program. But I know that, I, that and I'm, I'm almost surprised to see it ranked as high as it is, because I put pretty much threes across the board on that. So, yeah. I mean, the only thing I would say is I think this year we, to address that, we created a subcommittee to try to do some, <coughs> some conversations before the budget, and I don't think we ever had a report from the subcommittee. At this, the, is more, so this, this is more, this is more, we're talking about the, uh, the, um, well, the budget press is in there as well, yeah. but I mean, well, just to right, talk we're talking about, about NRPS, tw NRPS 2021, right? Correct. So what, that's how I read it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have, we don't have input before we. Before the budget, the right. Before we see that plan, and I on. think for me, the, you know, perhaps we can rephrase this indicator. I mean, I, I I'm not saying that we should have more 
say or influence over the strategic plan, but I just feel that it's presented, we look at it, we accept it, and that's kind of it. So I don't know if that's something that we as the evaluation subcommittee could review and see if that is even applicable to us. Yeah, and if, and if I was to, um, I might regrade our lower on that because we don't really assess the programs. We assess the strategic plan. Yes. So right. we don't we don't assess the programs really before the strategic plan comes out. So we might want to re reward how that how that's presented. Well, I mean, and and the only thing I would say is I would kind of echo a little bit of what. Uh, Chairman Webster said, and I'm not an educator, and I, I don't want to substitute my judgment at all. And so, you know, I, I think Mr. Bernard has done a good job with overseeing, you know, the, the administration and and overall, you know, presenting a, a strategic budget, a strategic plan that, you know, seems comprehensive to me. Again, hearing information earlier is always useful, and you know, maybe being able to comment, but. I mean, I think we, as school committee members, should be very hesitant to substitute our judgments for that of the administration. Another area that I will share also is um, on the last page, the family and community relations as far as performing outreach to improve community relationships. I don't think we, as a committee, Perhaps we don't plan and implement any sort of um, outreach. You know, we kind of will react individually when things occur, perhaps on social media. But as far as a plan, you know, or goals as a group of how we're going to reach the community members, and that was kind of an area that I thought we could improve upon. I, I would agree with that 100%. Although I think what we have done, and mainly over the past, five or six years starting with Mrs. Willis and then when John came on is kind of aggressively pushed our superintendents to get more communications out there. And I think um, between the weekly column and the transcript, um, John's newsletter, uh, a lot of the Twitter accounts now, um, are, are we're seeing information um, from either the athletic department or I know some teachers are using Twitter, um, other other groups, the the, um, the China trip, you were able to go mm -hmm. on to their Twitter, that yeah. their travel account, mm -hmm. and see yeah. the pictures every day, which was awesome. I mean, it was really fun to see that. The kids looked like they were having a great time. Except when they were eating the scorpions. And right. I, I didn't. <laughs> wasn't a big fan of that. But you're right. We don't. We don't really have a plan per se that. Or goals right. for the year. I mean, <clears throat> we have programmatic goals yep. and budgetary goals, but as far as community outreach, outreach, I don't think we as a committee have that sort of <clears throat> set I would agree with that. And those were kind of my um, questions that I had. My overall comment is, other than Mr. Buckley replacing Mr. Bowers, <laughs> um, this, no, this, the last three years, uh, three, four years of this committee has been the best committee I've served on. Um, the committees have always been hardworking. Uh, but I think the last three or four years, each member um, is prepared every week. And that's including one year with Buckley. Right, including yeah. one year with Buckley. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mr. Bowers, who happens to be here tonight, was a great contributing member of this committee. And uh, Scott, I think, has stepped right in. Doesn't have the institutional knowledge that Mr. Bowers has, but um, Scott's, a, Scott's been a great addition to the committee. And I, I think it's, it's just been, um, the one thing that, that I think is extremely important is we don't micromanage the superintendent, but we also don't just accept everything he asks us or tells us as fact or, okay, we're gonna do that. And I know, you know, in some subcommittee meetings, it, John and I and John and Jerry and the rest of it, we've gone back and forth we, all, over various issues. And I think that's our role is to, you know, is to keep the superintendent out. We, what we believe is the straight and narrow. And I think we have a really uh, solid relationship. I think it's a great committee. I think we, um, if there ever is dirty laundry, um, which is very rare, we don't air it in the committee. We, you know, we, uh, you know, we deal with it. We have motions to enact programs or or different um, 
changes that we want to make rather than having big arguments and fights about what we want to do. We just, we do it, we put it up for a vote, and we hope it, you know, we hope we go in the right direction. I think that's really reflected in this, because if you look at leadership and governance, and then you look at the budget process of financial and asset management, we have very high grades in those two areas. And I think the two areas that we, we the grades are lower, the educational program right. and the community relations, are two areas where the administration, I think, takes the lead mm -hmm. much more than the school committee does. Right. And so I think, I think if you look at that, I mean, really, uh, the leadership and governance has is, is always been high, but I think this time around, it's, it's as high as it's ever been. And again, same with the budget, because we're so actively involved in those two particular areas. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I will agree with Mr. Webster. I mean, I think it's, and it's been an honor to serve with, the, with this committee. I, I'd been to meetings before, but I don't think I even appreciated how much people do behind the scenes. Um, and I mean, people always talk about there's a lot of time commitment, but it, it is. I mean, there's a lot of subcommittees, a lot of other work. And you know, I think it, it's a little bit intimidating joining this committee with so much experience on it, to be honest. Um, but it's been great. I mean, people listen to each other. I think we all respect each other. And, and I think everybody kind of plays their own role as well and almost defers to different people on different subjects. And, I mean, it's just been, it's been actually a fun experience to, to be on the committee with people. And you know, I've learned a lot, and I think it's, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about losing Jerry and Julie next year because I think they are, you know, huge contributors to the, to the committee. So. Don't worry, you've still got my 14 years I to do. rely on, Mr. Biden. I do. Don't worry about that. I'll call, you, I'll call you a couple times a week if you want, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> I just think, you know, when Cliff was here, the meeting, when Cliff was chairman, the meetings were shorter than now that I'm chairman. <laughs> but um, I, I think, you know, the way I look at this committee, our, our meetings are always productive. Um, they're well organized, and, except when I forget to talk about the meetings coming up or I skip over a couple of uh, agenda items. Well, we get it in. Right. <laughs> Once you're reminded, you're good. And they're normally short couple hours, we usually in and out a couple hours. So, you know, overall, are we perfect? No, but um, if, you, if you do a little research and look around at what happens in a lot of other communities and how their school committees um, work, we're, we're a pretty effective school committee and we don't micromanage. And I think that's the worst thing that a committee can do is micromanage the superintendent and other people within the department. Um, and I've always, whenever I've needed information, I've always been able to get the information I needed. Um, just today, I was bugging Mr. Bernard about some information I wanted, um, and I got it. Within, you got it. Yep. <laughs> so you, that's you my overall. You have been an excellent committee. I would agree with that. <laughs> and, and those before you were excellent committee members, and the administration appreciates that very much. You allow us to do the work that we need to do with, with minimal interference and it is appreciated. I mean, I almost wish we had something like negative we could put on these, like really bad, like if mark something a one. But. Pro professional development. Well, yeah, professional, <laughs> yeah, and I, I mark professional development low. I do it every year. That's um, historic. But I think it's, I, I, I've started to come around on that because I think you, you're almost in a lot of ways responsible for your own, your own professional development. So reading, what's going on in education in the state, following the budget process in the state house. You know, those are the ways that, that I kinda learned more just by, by and, doing. And you are really very good about, mm -hmm. you know, you as well as, you know, hey, I found this article on. Right, post that, right. right. And, and, well, no, you share it with us. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Well, even like when MASC sent something out, we had a policy yeah. subcommittee and it, mm -hmm. I think at least two people had forwarded it to John. Yeah. Like, oh, we have to make sure we do this, and. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the yeah. last one on the, yeah. on the pregnancy, yeah. yeah. Right. Anything else? Thank you for compiling, Julie. Yeah, good job. Very good job. Thanks. For your last self-evaluation. Mm -hmm. She, I mean. Jerry, your last self-evaluation, yeah. how does that feel? Um, I should have given all fours. <laughs> <laughs> Note to self. <laughs> Yes, you, you blew it because it's your last chance. I know, I should have gone off. Unless there's some emergency where we need to call you back into no, action. No, but. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> it's a good feeling. <laughs> okay, next. So, uh, oh, one, one quick follow-up question. So, 
I happened to run into um, another elected public personnel in Melrose and was explaining that we were just doing our self-evaluation. And she was giving me some information about, and I don't know if it was a school committee or alderman or selectman, posting individual evaluations someplace for the public to see because the compilation of five self-evaluations could be like an open meeting um, question, like a questionable open meeting um, concern. So I don't know if that's something that we can do. So what was that again? Or, what would be the concern? So the fact that I got five of these right and sharing of ideas and opinions and concerns and things. So she kind of prompted me into thinking that we needed to post these individually online. There, were, there was some case that recently was decided. Well, it was something issue. recent that she was. It was on this issue. To me. It was on this issue, and I forget what it was, but it was it was about open meeting law, and it was. Mm -hmm. I think the way that the. I think the advisory board had told them to do it one way and it was still challenged. And they it said was related it was, to the, I forget what that one was, I think was related to the evaluation of a superintendent and Correct. they did the revaluate, they did the evaluation in executive session. Yeah. Has to be done. Public. It has to be done public. Yeah. That um, I, I would think that you don't necessarily have to post them. It may be that you want to keep it as part of the record and part of the minutes that they were submitted and then keep it available. And if somebody okay. wants to look at it, you can okay. do that. Yeah. And it, it shows as a, you listed as an item Yes. At the end of your minutes, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, it is a public it's document. On the, it's on the. No, but the uh, compilation. Agenda. She's talking about the individual. Right. No, I would. I would recommend. Do we put the um, the compilation on the website? No. I work. I'd recommend we have that on the website, and these these so. are public documents. If anybody wants yeah. to see them, they can go up to the office and. I mean, so there's no dialogue or debate about the compiling. Right. Or a vote. But right. the, the actual compiling. Is. Considered. Right. Okay. That's really only two people. I, I don't know. I mean, it was. It was. No, it's only one person compiling. It's just yeah, Julie. Oh, just Julie. Right. Yeah. But I, that's. I'm what just I, raising I'm it because someone mentioned it to me, so I didn't know if people so had more information just keep about them on it. File. Do you want us to give these to you, John? And right. that one goes to me. That goes to you. Yeah. Individual one. I, I, I would I would post the overall okay. grades on the website on the website, and I would note there that individual, individual. Um, individual um, reviews or evaluations are available. Yeah. I and don't have those, though. No, no you, we'll give oh, them we'll to, give you. to you. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that okay. solved the problem. I pass them down right now, and that makes it easier. Thank you. I never want to see like it. Like available at the uh, request of the superintendent's office? Yeah. Something, yeah. Nobody's ever going to ask for them. No. Cliff will tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Julie. And I'll just have Ann retain them. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have the. Uh, I don't think. Yeah, he, he, I don't think. Goes to yeah. I gave you the. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jerry gave you the compiled report. The compiled. <laughs> he gave the other one too. I you did. gave the other one. I, I, you, yeah, I, I have yours. Yeah, I'm need all set. Right. Yeah. Right. So next, we have the end. Fiscal 2017 financial report, Michael. Yes. Thank you. So. As is typical around this time of year, we, we do receive the end of year financial uh, audit report for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2017. So this is the prior fiscal year. Um, so just a reminder what this report is. Essentially, uh, every district is required by um, you know, law to submit their end of the year financial report by September 30th. Um, at the end of each you know, fiscal year, and essentially that's a very uh, so, you know, large detailed report that includes all the you know revenue re received and dollars you know spent throughout the fiscal year and um, in what funds and so forth and what um, categories of expenditures and revenue that they were received in. So um, that report was compiled. It is required to be audited by an outside you know CPA audit firm annually, and that needs to process needs to be completed by March 31st. So this process was um, completed recently. We received the report over the last few weeks, and it's included in your packet this evening for review. 
I'm happy to report that everything kind of went went very well and you know pretty smooth. Um, there was uh, it was a it was a smooth process. Uh, very little you, you know findings, if any. I think there was only one really to speak of um, that was referenced in the report, which was very minor and it's, uh, was actually amended after the report was done. It was a small receipt that was received on June 30th that was posted last fiscal year as well as this fiscal year. Um, but that, that was, that was uh, corrected. Um, and that's it, and that, that was the only thing of note. Um, so I think, it's, I think it's fair to say it was, it was a good report. You know, everything's in good, good standing. They it's not an audit, it's just a review, right? Well, they, yeah, it's a review, they audit. I mean, it's a hard report to audit, but I would say the woman spends a week in the office oh, really? and wow. goes through every single uh, line item and every single number that is recorded on the report. <laughs> she, she works hard to, to, to try to find something. Find something. Yeah. That's so, good news, uh, Michael. Yeah, so every, everything went smoothly as it, as it typically has done in the past. And um, I'll take the opportunity to thank uh, Elizabeth Rourke, the town finance director, who works very closely with me on compiling the, you know, the school expenditures that kind of hit the town side of the books to make sure we get that information and everything gets reported timely and accurately. And um, we have a good system in place, so I, I appreciate her assistance as, as well. Any questions for Michael? Good job, uh, no, Mike. Only thing I would just ask, I know last year there was a lot of revisions to some of the policies that we worked on about like how money for clubs are, are collected and those sorts of things. Were they looking at those as well? Uh, no, they, they, okay. this is a report that, I know we're saying it's, sim it's simply looking at um, all the numbers that get recorded um, on the end of the report is done in a, such a way that is to, required by the the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education in terms of, uh, there's a chart of account requirement and methodology in terms of what category, how we categorize certain expenditures in terms of what's administration, what's instructional, what's student services, what's operations and maintenance, what's fixed costs, what's benefits, and um, as well as what would be included salaries, contractual services, a supply. It's just making sure that all the expenditures that were reported to the Department of Education got reported in the correct manner and consistently. And um, you know, the report was able to you know, report out that that was, that was indeed the case. So um, if you have a very good chart of accounts, and the report is, is really easy. I'm happy to report that our chart of accounts is, makes, that, makes the process. Even though it takes a lot of work, it's, 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 an e it's easier because of the, the chart of accounts is very much in line with what the Department of Education uh, wants to see. Thank you, Michael. Great. Thank you. Okay, next. Now the pressure is really on Superintendent Bernard. We have to go in the other room. Oh. <laughs> Won't be able to show it on television? I have a video presentation. Okay. Do you want to do it next week instead so the people that are watching can, I can see do it? The, I can do both. Do you want I'd to see it tonight? I prefer to delay it for a week so it can I'm be on. I'm happy to do that in yeah. this room so that the yeah. public is aware. But do you want to, it's, it literally will take about 90 seconds to show you the if you want to see it, if you want to just wait till tomorrow. I'd rather wait till. Fine. Is everybody okay with waiting until next yeah. week and then? Okay, so we'll 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 Mr. table. Mr. Bowers that. is probably disappointed in that, but, but because it's one of the items I'm being evaluated on, I, I want to assure you it is ready to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Next, minutes. Executive session, March 26, 2018. You have a motion to approve, please. Motion to approve executive mi um, session minutes of March 26, 2018. Could I have a second? Second. Motion by Janine, second by Julie. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. And I should say, John, on our executive session tonight, the motion was Janine and second by Julie to go into um, open session, and that was at 6.30. Thank you. And um, open session minutes, March 26, 2018. Motion to approve open session of March 26, 2018, um, minutes. Second. Motion by Janine, second by Julie. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Okay, next. I'd like to make a motion to accept the open session. No, no, we're workshop. done. Yeah. I only have two here. I have two. There's budget. I have three. I only have two on the for approval. Hmm. I don't have. It's behind the. Oh yeah, I do see that. 
the last page. You have it, it in the packet. I don't think it's in my report. No, it's not on here for approval. That's why. Do we not do want have to approve it or just? I didn't even read it. April Fourth budget workshop. Yeah. I honestly usually like to read the minutes for approval. So. It's only one page. So. So it's on the back of this. It's, it's a very, it's a separate section, separate uh, sheet. Okay. So if you want to make a motion. Make a motion to accept the open session budget workshop of April 4, 2018. Can I second if I wasn't there? No. Okay. Second. I just want to make sure they spell my name right. So we have a motion by Janine, second by Scott. Any further discussion? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Stain? One. Okay, next, Michael, budget update. Yes, thank you. So in your packet this evening uh, was the budget update that reflects activity through about the middle of April. Um, and there's not a lot of changes from what was uh, discussed at uh, the last month's meeting. Um, you know, I think we're still remain in pretty good standing as we really approach the final you know, two months of this fiscal year to, to close out the fiscal year. The same trends and items I've highlighted th throughout the fiscal year certainly ring true uh, today. Um, you know, we've certainly, uh, due to some Costs that have arisen in the special education tuition front, we certainly had a need to incur or um, use the majority of the, the prepayment amounts that we uh, prepaid at the end of fiscal year 2017 to cover these additional unanticipated costs that arose this year. Uh, we all know that that's a lot of ways that cost and um, is rolling over into fiscal year 2019. We, we've talked about that and we've talked about next year. Um, you know, most of the other uh, ex on the items on the expense side, certainly utilities is something we track closely. I think we're going to expand the majority of our electricity budget um, this year. I, we have, I do anticipate we'll have a small amount of available funds in the gas budget to repurpose at the end of the year. Um, through the first half of the fiscal year, we certainly um, experienced several kind of maintenance repair needs, you know, in the areas of HVAC, plumbing, um, you know, boiler type repairs that were certainly dealt with and we were able to, to use, to deal with those within the existing budget allotment. Um, we talk a little bit about the food service program um, at, the, at each month and we closed out the month of March with a small net gain of $646.10. Um, we had hoped that that gain was going to be a little bit better than it, than it is, although we're happy that we were in the black for the month of March. Um, the program did lose three operating days in the month of March due to the snow cancellations, which does have an impact. Um, so, I, you know, we're going to be closing out April in the next 10 days or so. I'm, I'm told that, you know, April has, has been going well, and April is, is typically a, a challenging month. So, um, we are trending about $6,000 behind our projected amounts that would yield the break-even program, although we do anticipate making up the majority of that over the final three months, April, May, and June, final quarter with a, a solid finish, uh, especially a good month in next month in May. Um, so I think we'll get much closer to break even, but we might come you know, a couple thousand shy of that, but we'll, you know, we'll see how the next couple months, three months play out. Um, despite that, I think you know, there's, there's still some good you know, signs within the program. You know, average meals sold per day are up on average you know, 10%. The middle school has been up significantly this year. The high school continues to, to, to be up, and the elementary schools are, are trending pretty well as, uh, as well. The things that we did start this year with the um, you know, expansions of some of the breakfast program at the high school, um, as well as you know, salad bar options and so forth, those things seem, you know, seem to be doing, doing well. So I think all in all, I think it's been, it's been a good year. We're hoping for a strong finish. And um, I will remind you, we do have some contractual language protection up to the tune of around 25,000 should we not achieve break even. So I think we're okay, I think we're in good standing, but I know we've talked about it um, each month. And then on the payroll side, there's really nothing significant to report. Most lines are all within budgeted amounts. You know, we, we certainly have had a need to hire some long-term substitutes and so forth to 
cover some absences, which is always the case, so we monitor the impact of those. But I think in most cases, we seem to be doing, um, you know, those, the payroll, you know, salary side of things are in good shape. So I think we're in good standing to close the fiscal year over the final two months. Um, and our goal is to kind of meet, at this point, the carry forward, um, you know, projections and benchmarks for next year. And I think we're in good, good shape to do that at this point. It's tight, but I think, I think we'll, things are looking pretty good. Any questions? Just a quick question about the, the extraordinary relief. Oh, yes. The SPED reimbursement. Can you? Yeah, so that is um, that? certainly when we talk about the fiscal 2019 budget, um, we'll be meeting on, on Wednesday as a budget, school committee budget workshop, and then we'll be bringing the, any final changes and recommend, uh, recommendations to the full committee. Um, and publicly next week on Monday, but we've had some good information come forward that is related in a lot of ways to those additional costs that I talked about earlier. We've had some, some additional you know, tuition costs arose this year, which fortunately we exceeded the amount we had benchmarked or budgeted in special education prepayment, so we were able to mitigate those new costs this year without a major impact on this year's budget. Uh, but it did rise, our baseline did rise that out of district cost this year, which as you know is rolling into next year. But when that does happen to a level that is 25% uh, at or greater than 25% from your costs last year, again, those, these are eligible tuition out of district costs, um, you can apply and, and receive what's known as extraordinary relief funding with the, with the state. So. We thought that was the case this year. We were trending that way. We watched it closely. We were just over that 25% threshold. And we did submit a claim, and we were notified about a week ago, um, actually from today, that we that our claim got uh, reviewed, accepted, and uh, and funded to the tune of actually $131,000. We had estimated it to be around 125. dollars The amount posted Friday, believe it or not, and we actually got a letter on Friday afternoon. And the amount was just over $131,000. So that, that's certainly good news. <coughs> we will certainly make, though that those funds will be spent this year, but we will actually make those funds available in, in, in next year through essentially that's less circuit breaker funds coming in this year that you have to kind of utilize. It's, it increases our carryover into next year. So that will actually help the, the current FY19 budget shortfall. Um, and we'll be talking about that on Wednesday and again next Monday. Uh, but it's, it is certainly good news um, in terms of additional, in some ways, one-time revenue, but additional revenue that we will receive, which will help, we'll make that available for, to help the shortfall for next year. Great. Thank you. Um, Great. There's no other questions on the report. There was another supplemental report about student activities, which I can talk about. Um, so I've been doing these reports quarterly, so as we, we usually need about a month to close each quarter. So March 31st represented the completion of quarter three. So this is, um, in a lot of ways, getting into what Mr. Buckley was referring to and changing of how some student accounts were being tracked. And, and we now have a much formal process of, of reconciling our student activity accounts with our, our bank statements and reporting out at least on a quarterly basis publicly to the school committee and so forth. So we've been doing reports that look similar to the report that was in your packet. Um, and this report was completed over the last week or so as we got the final bank statements, which, so the, the, these balances, reconciled certified bank balances, represent the end of quarter three, which again, March 31st, 2018. So what's, what is included is, Again, there are five student activity accounts at each school. Um, what's included is your, your certified uh, you know, bank balance, which does ma match our control accounts, our, our records at each of the schools. And then at the middle school and the high school where there are various sub-accounts um, that goes along with these balances, I've included the various sub-account balances at the high school and the middle school um, for you to review and, and take a look at. Um, so I think we are certainly following uh, the new policies and I think we're in uh, compliance with the state regulations. I will note that as part of the, the policy and as part of the, the state regulations, not only do we need to have an independent 
audit done by a certified CPA firm once every three years, which was done last year. And that, that audit was, was presented last spring. Uh, we need to have an internal audit done annually as well. So that internal audit actually occurred last week. Um, and this year we decided to meet that uh, requirement by contracting through MASBO, Massachusetts Association of School Business Officials, and we've actually, actually we had a um, retired certified licensed school business official come and spend uh, a day in the office visiting the schools, interviewing staff, and checking on the procedures, and that, that occurred at a, one day last week. Um, I had my exit interview with him last week, and I think everything was in good, he was pretty impressed, he thought everything was in good standing, nothing at all even close to being serious was the last statement he said to me before he left for the day. So we'll, we'll receive that report in the next couple of weeks, and when that report becomes available, I'll obviously make sure you have, each have a copy of that, and um, that will come in a future packet, but I think we're in good shape. So how about the class 2019? What are they doing to raise funds? You know, I took a, that one jumped out at me, too. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Expect a good class gift, huh? <laughs> I wonder if that's related to, like, the sophomore semi. I know. Oh, I know. maybe. Yeah. Some so of the semi-formal, they hadn't yeah, so paid the, kind of the revenue comes in. Class, some of this yeah. is timing. Yeah, revenue yeah, yeah. Comes in, and maybe that's, you're probably right. Junior prom. Junior, junior, junior prom. prom. Yeah. Junior, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, junior yeah. prom. Yeah. So that, that yeah. must be how that is. All the bills I think that was what that is. That's what that is. And now on maskers. Do we expect that this amount, 78,000, is going to be what they close yeah. with? So I know. I think there will be some additional expenditures that will, that will go down over the next couple of months. They had their New York trip. Some expenses came in for that. Um, I think we'll, we'll, have, we'll still have expenses for that. There's also some year-end stuff to anticipate on purchasing based on some things we talked about last quarter. So I think, we'll, I think when we close out the June 30th balance, I expect that will be lower. Um, and I know right now she likes to keep that balance within, like, the 50 to 60,000 range at the end of each year. So they have their the startup balance available for next year's production and the advertising costs. So I think I think we'll see that be lower before the end of quarter four. And there's no issues with keeping an account that high? No, so uh, one of the things I did ask the auditor to weigh in on was that you know one thing that our policy does not have that some of the regs talk about that we can have is that you know we can actually vote um, maximum balances uh -huh. in each account, and it, should, it may be something we want to consider. We, we're a little bit different in the sense that the principals don't have checking accounts. Uh, okay. Everything flows through the town treasurer uh, okay. and the, in my in my office, and every check is cut through the town treasurer. So if they need money, they have the to go through process. you, and then through yeah. Liz. So a lot of ways, with, a lot of times. And that was how that was the interpretation by Lance and Heath last year was because we don't have that arrangement, we kind of we don't necessarily have to vote those checking account balances. That's actually good. But we we could still have something in there if we wanted to. But yeah, there's no no there's no there's no issue. I I wouldn't put anything in as as the process you just described. We're in good shape. I, I, the fact that they can't they have to go through you and then I mean, yeah. So there's the an, there's an extra layer of control is. and an extra checks and balance here. I know it might add process. another day or two to the process, but I think yeah. it puts a good process in place, right. and then people know they have to mm -hmm. go, they have to give enough leeway in order right. to get their right. funds. So yeah. I think that's good. Anybody else have any questions or, or comments for Michael on the act the clubs the club report, club and other school expense. Report. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. John, nothing to report on staffing? No, sir. I think we have one bid, one donation tonight. Ms. Kopke. Sure. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation in the amount of $222.50 from the E.S. Little Elementary Parent Teacher Organization to support transportation costs for the grade four field trip to the Boston Symphony Orchestra. Second. Motion by Ms. Kopke, second by Ms. Embriano. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Before we get into the uh, information section, I, did, I did do want to report out that we've made um, excellent progress on uh, our negotiations with the NREA, and hopefully we'll have something to report within the next few months, but things are moving along um, very well with those negotiations. So I just wanted to update the committee and update the community on that. Okay, next, subcommittee updates. Mr. Buckley, you're at the top of the list. NORCAM oh. Board of Directors update. 
Well, as I mentioned when the middle school was here, um, the one thing that I thought was interesting was they did specifically say they're going to be broadcasting some of the, the concerts here and some things from the YouTube channels. It seems like people from the schools are talking with them about you know, some of the programs to put on there. Other than that, it was just you know a normal meeting going through contract negotiations right now with you know, Verizon, mm -hmm. which is a little bit challenging, I understand. <laughs> okay. Any questions for Scott? Ms. Venezia, you want to take the uh, finance planning team? I didn't, but I'll start it. Um, <laughs> we essentially, at the last finance planning team meeting, uh, we were able to reduce the budget deficit for the level services budget to about $64,000. Um, however, the, uh, the preferred budget that we had placed in, I think it still leaves us, John, a little shot, over $300,000. And that's the uh, the budget that we are again trying to implement some of the NRPS uh, 2021 staffing requirements. So um, we had actually uh, that was supposed to be the last meeting before we voted on our budget, but we actually scheduled another meeting for this Wednesday. John made a very good pitch for additional funding uh, for certain positions in the budget, and uh, the uh, finance planning team was kind enough to at least take that into consideration and going to get back to us when we meet on Wednesday to see what we can do about it. But at least, again, the uh, level services budget's been reduced. Um, uh, the deficit's been reduced down to about $65,000, $64,000. I think that's, that was the only item we really focused on um, was... Is there anything else? Pretty much no. was. That was it? That was it, yeah. So we've made a lot of progress, um, but we're still mm -hmm. not where we'd like to be. And that includes the $131,000? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that was coming, that coming off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah that's a good point, Scott. I yeah, it did. that money yeah. that we yeah. got back. I mean, the one, other, the one other thing we're looking at, and we may not know this until June 30th or later, is additional um, circuit breaker. Uh, it looks like this, both the Senate and the House yeah. passed something that will get us up to 70%, yeah. maybe a little more than 70%, which right. would bring us, what, about 30,000 more? Yeah, I think they seem pretty confident that that number is going to land somewhere at 70, 71% from, right. from 65. So that, that will bring us about 30, 31 to, you know, $35,000. should also issue. point out, too, the town's still uh, running a deficit in their budget. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, I forget the amount that they had. 100 was it something. 180? Was yeah, so. so they're running a deficit as well. Yeah. So, but they've been very helpful, very cooperative. Very. It's been very collaborative in trying to make uh, get us to where we want to go. So, I agree. Uh, policy subcommittee, anything in addition to anything new? We're we're through all 99 MASC policies. <laughs> we there's a couple of things that we're doing follow-ups on. You know, I had to ask the attorney on something, but down to like maybe three or four. Yeah, there's like a couple things we might be bringing forth. Like there's. Mm. A couple of policies that I've, I, I, I sent, but you know, we're, but we're through all of them. We just have a couple of final ones. So, so did, did you and Janine sing 99 uh, <laughs> bottles of policy on the walls? <laughs> and They've been finished? troopers, 7 a.m. on yes, Friday. Yes, I know. That's They've been troopers. outrageous. <laughs> My singing Wait. voice is not as good as yours, Mel. So I didn't Janine try. The meeting was at 6 a.m.? <laughs> <laughs> He's so never going to stop. I have to vouch for Janine. She's been, been good. She's been early. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Now, there's, I meant to bring it tonight. There was, there's been a policy floating around mask um, listserv on student meals. Yeah. Are you guys working on that? We brought Janine, Janine brought that up Friday. Okay. Yeah. And it's all set. All right. We're set. And we brought up the the pregnancy, the new right. pregnancy law as yeah. well. And you know, the only thing that we didn't do was um, go through all the ones that they said was no longer needed. Oh, for some cleaning, yeah. cleaning out, so to yeah. speak? We haven't done that. No, yet. we haven't done that. So that'll be pegged on to the new policy. To the new, to the new subcommittee. Just a bit of advice, guys. When the new members come aboard, throw this policy subcommittee <laughs> stuff right and in their lap. I can make a commitment to you that if there's 7 a.m. meetings, I will not be a member <laughs> of the policy subcommittee next year. But if they won't have to be 7 a.m., maybe if you're you off onto bigger and better things, right? We'll see what... Yeah, that was... But any, any committee not. Scott's on is going to be 7 a.m., so don't put me on any committees <laughs> that Scott <laughs> participates in. I think if you and I are both on the committee, nobody else will get to talk, so... That's true. <laughs> Okay, coming up, we have tomorrow uh, athletic subcommittee. Um, we have SSBC tomorrow, as Mr. Bernard mentioned. So the athletic subcommittee is 12:30. SSBC is 5:30. We have a finance planning team meeting Thursday, uh, Wednesday at 8 a.m. 
Um, it's not on here. I don't see. We have a budget sub. Oh, because we it's down we scheduled further. it. We have a budget no, subcommittee it's meeting. Future business. business. Okay, we have a budget subcommittee meeting at uh, excuse me a budget workshop on Wednesday at four o'clock. So we'll get whatever final news we get out of finance planning and then right. proceed to hopefully come up with whatever budget we're going to vote on Monday night. Yeah. And then Scott has a NORCAM, or someone else maybe, will have a NORCAM Board of Directors meeting on May 24th because we will be reorganized at that time. Um, what else? We got anything, uh, administrative reports, Mr. Bernard? Yes, so you should have a packet at your, at your spot here at the table. Um, just a few things I wanted to bring to your attention. I just, you know, I got thinking that um, you know, just, just to kind of Bring, close the loop, so to speak, for something that I had mentioned on opening day back in September was a, a book study that the um, leadership team had engaged in, and I had talked about that, you know, pretty pretty widely at our at our opening day meeting back in September. So I just I shared with you a, a final product of um, the PowerPoint presentation that the administrative council had put together on the book, um, the Innovator's Mindset. All of the administrators have contributed to this document. I thought it was just important for you to see that, you know. We carried through with that. I do share the, the PowerPoint out with the district-wide faculty, and I actually do uh, each year get a couple of inquiries from people wanting to know if there's a copy of the book down in the uh, in the central office, and such was the case again this year. So I think it's a good thing to, you know, just highlights for people some of the some of the things that the leadership team is doing and lights a little bit of a spark, if you will, for um, some other ideas that, that staff might have. And did you prove that everyone read the book? I can uh, I can I can say that with confidence. Yeah, we all take we all take a they have to present publicly in front of the oh, okay. front of the leadership team their mm -hmm. chapter. Yes, yeah, so there is So John, will no this hiding. will the administrative council share this with staff? We I something? did. Okay. Yeah, and that's what prompted me to share it with you. I yeah. had done that and I thought, you know what? I talked with all with all people at the meeting on opening day when when the committee was there sure. and so I that's why I wanted to share it with you. To, you know, just kind of like circle back with it, if you will. Sure. But I did. I disseminated that as a, an, you know, kind of an email blast out okay. to the to the faculty back, oh, a few weeks, several weeks ago, anyway, because okay. um, we had been reading it into the into the early part of the winter. The second thing I, I, I attached for you some documents. This is really in its infancy stage, but I thought it was important for the committee to be aware of. It's kind of, a, of something I think that we can be proud of as a district that we have um, been invited to participate in a newly formed uh, Massachusetts School Mental Health Consortium. This came out of um, a grant that was obtained by the Methuen Public Schools, and because of our, um, I'll say our networking at the councilor level, um, we were invited to participate with one of 30 districts that has started to meet. It's, this is free um, for our participation. I attached uh, three documents for you of, um, of some of the things that are, are taking place and have taken place. The group is a little bit behind because of some poor weather in February and March where two, I think two meetings were missed because they were snow cancellation day, dates across the region. But our coordinator of school counseling services, Mr. Rosa, um, administered the self-evaluation <coughs> first um, with his department. And I've talked with him recently about bringing that to the full leadership team, much like we did a self-assessment using the Future Ready Schools initiative. I thought that that might be something that we would want to um, share with a kind of a larger group to kind of get the, the needs um, assessed for mental health um, at the elementary, middle, and high schools. So um, it, as I said, it's kind of in its infancy stage, but I, I thought it was a, a nice offer for us to, to, to take up on, and, and I, I foresee that, um, especially where we're you know, talking more and more about social-emotional learning, about mental health issues, some of the positions we're looking to add through NRPS 2020, 2021 are in the area of um, um, addressing social-emotional needs and mental health needs of students, um, that this is just one more initiative that I think we might be able to to, uh, to take advantage of to the benefit of our students here in the district. The third thing I shared is uh, my spring newsletter. Um, so that is in here. Uh, there's a little farewell message for Mr. Venezia and Mrs. Kopke, thanking them for their service on the, uh, on the school committee. It's going to be an emotional meeting next Monday when we say goodbye to both of you. But uh, that newsletter went out uh, midweek hey, last week. Speak for yourself week. on it being emotional. <laughs> Absolutely. It might be celebratory for talking, one person. No, I'm talking about it. <laughs> so. Um, so thank you both. We'll talk a little bit more about, about that, I'm sure, next week. But um, um, just, you know, some of the highlights of what's going on across the district in my, in my spring uh, newsletter that was sent out midweek last week. And then lastly, um, just following up on 
one of the goals that the committee had established at its, at its workshop, goal setting workshop last summer. Um, I, what I decided to do in recognizing the retiring staff from the district is because the elementary school principals will be here on June 11th presenting their school improvement plans. I've invited the elementary level staff to that meeting so that we, have, we will have a gift for them and um, you know, a presentation for them at that meeting. And then the, the secondary staff, the middle and high school staff, um, I've sent a letter out and invited them to the June 25th meeting when the middle school principal and the high school principal will be um, presenting their school improvement plan. So, Whose idea was this? Julie's. I think it was Julie's. I was going to yeah. say giving credit. Julie's. I'll make sure I come. I'd love to have Julie here and Mr. Venezia because uh, yeah, 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 exactly. a lot of these teachers that makes sense. Sorry, I'll, under, I'll be busy. Served under their reign of terror, so they may want to come back and... Uh, no, that this was Julie's idea, yeah, and it was, I think it's, it's a, a great good idea, idea to have public nice acknowledgement. It, yeah. I will tell you, I, the letter we sent out through through my office, and we're, we're keep, keeping up with the book tradition too of, of um, asking staff to uh, select a book that will be placed in the in a in whatever library at a school that they designate. We've we've done that traditionally, um, so we, we're continuing to do that. But um, I asked them to RSVP. Um, to Ann, if, if they were able to come to the meeting, and the responses started coming very quickly. I think they really, I don't know that anyone has said that they are not able to attend, quite honestly. This is what distinguishes Julie from me. She's still coming up with good ideas. And she right? cares. And I've got nothing to offer. And she cares. I think, it's, I think it's a nice idea. I really do. They, they really, I think the staff think appreciated it. So I, think it's a, I, hope you can, I hope you both can come back. I think it would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the one so, thing, if I may, just when we're giving out credit, I mean, I think it's, I think it's worth noting Mr. Webster and Mr. Venezia just for the last month because they've been both negotiating the NREA <laughs> contract and doing everything with finance planning. And we look at the schedule, and so, I mean, it's, it's a lot of time. We've had two it's weeks. It's a lot of time. And this week, we've had two or three weeks we've been here, four or five days a week, yeah. both like morning and after, because Athletic Subcommittee, Athletic Facilities Committee. One day, I think you topped six hours. Yeah. Wow. One day. I think six it was hours one day there was six hours yeah. here. And so you guys are good about acknowledging other people, but I mean, I think you guys have done a lot of work in the last month uh, on behalf of the committee, so I just thank you for thank that. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Um, thank you. Nineteen. 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 That's yeah. Eighteen and a half. I rounded it up, Jerry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I gave you the benefit. Did you give him twenty? <laughs> I gave him nineteen. Oh, oh thank God. He gave him twenty. He never oh, would have stopped gives talking. Me that extra Try to bump his pension. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you multiply also zero times 19. 19, and that comes up to zero if my math is correct. May 7th meeting, you presented. <laughs> okay, so uh, in May 7th, we will uh, say, uh, correspond oh, we'll say goodbye to them on May 7th. They do yes. have one meeting. Correspondence, anything? No, there was, one, uh, there was one document for you only in the packet. It was a follow-up from the coordinated program review. Oh yeah, you got copied on yeah, yeah. the letter that got sent. It was a standard letter. Right, we're in good shape with yep. um, our special education yes. coordinated program review. Yeah. It was an yeah, update yeah. for you. Yeah. Okay, future business. Um, we have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Wednesday with the budget workshop at four, May seventh. Regular meeting at six. We may or may we will need an executive session for at least a half we an hour. Do. Oh, okay. We could do five thirty. You, right? I think you would want us to have an executive session at five thirty. <laughs> okay. No, that's fine. It's just I'll update that agenda. I just okay. did it for the. Um, yeah. So we'll have to update that. Public schools app, but I'll, I'll. That's fine. I can do it right now. Okay. Um. So executive session five thirty, regular meeting six o'clock, and as I noted, we will be saying goodbye, uh, fondly to, two of our valued colleagues here. Um, May twenty first, we will be at the little school for regular meeting at six thirty. And that'll be their presentation, which will wrap up our five school presentations this year. June 4th is town meeting. I know Jerry has requested to sit up the front with us. I don't know if they'll give him approval. And I don't know. No, I don't think. I don't as think long as we have candy. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's at 630. We'll probably meet at 6. I think, I think I'm banned from town meeting after the last one. <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you were called out last that's time. That's true. Specifically. <laughs> that's right. Jerry had a oh, un very unfortunate. Um, June 11th is our regular meeting here at 6.30, then June 25th, and then we will go into our summer schedule. And a reminder, if you haven't gotten them to her already, I don't know how you're going to get them to her, but the uh, formative assessments for Mr. Bernard's um, mid-term mid review, essentially, um, are due to Ms. Embriano tonight. I have everything. Good. And you got mine last week, right? Yes. I mean, last meeting. Anything else? That I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Unanimous.